What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to talk about some of the different boots I've been using throughout the years and in particular I'm going to focus on my new pair of boots that I've used uh, this last archery season in 2020 and obviously I'm going to be using these going forward in 2021. So to start, you know, the best boot for you uh, are the boots that fit in your in your budget right so you want to get started with something that that um, you can afford but having said that on boots in particular I would try to not go too cheap because if you're out in the backcountry or even if you're hunting out of your your truck and you're a couple miles in and your feet get soaking wet or cold or your boots are falling apart, which that has happened to me before on a shed hunting trip, it really makes that hunt absolutely miserable. So, so keep that in mind when you're, when you're picking boots. So these boots right here are my first pair of hunting boots I've ever, ever bought. And they're the uh, Danner Pronghorns 800 gram thinsulated and I bought these back when I mainly did rifle hunting and shed hunting so I was really worried that my feet were going to get get cold that's why I went with such a he heavy insulation the 800 and I believe these come uninsulated and they go to 400 800 and then 1200 and for the pronghorns I still use these and I've had them for about seven years now. I still use them when I'm out in the snow with the kids or out shoveling snow and I've actually used them a few years ago on uh, October hunt and they do a good job. They still keep my feet dry for the most part unless it's really really wet out walking through marshy wet grass. Eventually they get waterlogged kind of and my feet start getting getting wet but I can still do a full day of hunting in them with no problem. These pronghorns they're right around the 200 to 240 price range and they're about 3.6 pounds in, in weight so they're they're a little on the heavy side and they're they're a great boot. My um, my first experience with them was actually pretty bad. The first pair I got, I had to uh, send back for a replacement. There was a defect with them and they were really rubbing my, I, th I think it was my right foot, right behind the heel. It felt like there was a bulge in the boot and I just still try to break them in. I just thought, hey, I'll just keep wearing them, keep wearing them, break them in. And, and after I put I think it was close to 200 miles in almost a year and um, my foot was killing me and eventually I reached out to Danner and they just replaced them no cost so uh, thumbs up to Danner on that so pronghorns great 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 boot after I was kind of ready I got into archery and I was ready to move to something less insulated I went ahead with the Danner Elk Hunters and these are pretty heavy. They're four pounds for the pair or the pronghorns are 3.6. These are four pounds but they're super rugged and super aggressive soles on them. Very soft so I wouldn't I would not buy these to wear out out and about on this, you know, out on, on pavement and doing work outside or anything like that just because they will wear out really quick walking on, on pavement or cement. Um, and that's, I've experienced a little bit of that, but a lot of the reviews and the research I've done, they def, they pointed that out on these. And I really like these boots. I like the the look of them, which I don't know, I just want to wear something that, that looks looks good, looks hardcore, it's something that doesn't look too goofy, I guess. 
Anyways, they just have that old school look to them. But again, right out of the box, I wore them a little bit around the house to break them in before uh, one of my archery hunts. And I started, um, went out on my first hunt, I was about four hours away from my house, started walking in them, and they were making a super loud clicking noise. And it came from, again, from behind the heel. So I just carried on, finished that hunt, I said, screw it, I'll finish the season in them, um, did that, and then it just, honestly, it just stopped bugging me, and over time, that clicking sound went away. It did take a while. Well, later that year, I had a rifle deer tag, warm and wet environment, and my feet got soaking wet right away. So again, these were faulty, kind of how my first pronghorns were faulty. The part I screw up with these was I kind of spaced it, forgot, forgot until the next season when I wore them in, in wet conditions. When I reached out to, to Danner, it had been over a year since my purchase and they weren't able to help me out with it, which I completely understand. It was totally on me just being um, I guess forgetful, lazy about it, or whatever you want to call it. So I kind of screwed myself with on these, but and as you can tell, I still wear these. It fits dry conditions outside. I wear them all the time with that, which is why now they're getting worn out pretty good, a little rough looking, and I still still use them. But if it's raining or anything like that. Obviously, I want to keep my feet dry, so I'm not going to wear these. The price point on these are um, just over $300, I believe. These do come uninsulated and then 400 grain insulated. And like I said, they're right around $320, 300 to 320 So I use these for a couple years, and then, like I mentioned in the beginning of my video, my my most recent boots that I've been using are the Zamberlin, let me look at my cheat sheet here, Zamberlin Lynx Mid GTX with the BOA system lacing. This boot has been out for, for many years now, the, the Lynx, but they were just the conventional shoelace system. And when I saw the BOA, I was really intrigued by it because I have owned other shoes with BOA system and I've always had a great experience. I've had snowboarding boots and I had two different uh, pairs of running shoes that came with the BOA system. And if you guys are not familiar with it, it's really simple. It's like a ratchet system. You, uh, you twist and it tightens the shoelace. And then to, to loosen it, you just pull on the knob and then you just stretch it out and then and, and the shoelace get, get loose. And some of the reviews that I've read, someone had a bad experience in the back country, the, one of the wires broke, I guess. So that would be a big bummer. And it's not as easy, you know, if, if you break a shoelace on one of these, you could use some, some paracord or something with these, you're in a lot bigger trouble. So I've actually been contemplating on um, throwing in my bag whenever I use these these boots to throw a replacement uh, wire for, for these, which you can get online. So I kind of been playing with that idea to throw a, a re repair or a replacement kit in my bag, just so uh, if I'm out there, you know, four or five, six miles, on a backpacking hunt, I won't be uncomfortable with the broken lace system. But I'm telling you right now, the best boot I've ever used in my life. Period. Yes, they are expensive. They're right around anywhere between 400 and 440. So almost double the cost of these. A hundred dollars more than these or so. Super light, 2.6 pounds for the pair, just incredibly light. Very stiff boot, which is a first for me. 
Both of these are pretty soft, but to my surprise, super comfortable and incredible support. Side hilling in these, I just couldn't believe the difference on using a stiff boot. I was just very skeptical. I'm a skinny guy, you know, I'm 5'10", 160 pounds, and to me the idea of having having a, a stiff boot on like just my body weight alone won't be able to give this boot any give but I just went with it and I'm I'm so so glad I that I went with these couple neat uh, things on these boots besides the lacing system is they do have a hinge right here is what I call it and I think I'm not sure what the actual name for that is but it, it acts like a hinge so when you're walking it gives a little flex here right over here and on this other side too to where it doesn't put pressure on on your ankle and you don't develop like pressure points and and uh, develop you know foot fatigue or blisters or anything like that and being uncomfortable so that's really neat and um, and maybe that's why they're so comfortable. They are super stiff, but they have that hinge where it allows some mobility uh, around the ankle. The soles on these are just gnarly, super grippy, very very aggressive, uh, vibram obviously, and oh, man, they're just they're beasts. Just like these guys here, the material they use is incredibly soft, which gives you good good grip on, on rocks and what have you. I, I just can't say enough about these. Um, they're made in Italy. You know, look, up, look, look them up on their website, zambrilin.com, um, I think it is. Just Google it. And they have a lot, a lot of different types styles of boots they have I think they started in in just mountaineering boots and then they expanded into other other outdoor activities such as hunting and and you can send them in you know if if they wear out you can send them in and they'll replace the, the soles and I'm not really sure the the cost on that I'm sure it's not cheap so if I ever, if I get to that point, I'll have to see if it's worth doing it or if I should just buy another pair. The only downfall to these, and this is just my, in my opinion, they are hard to put on. Because of the, these laces, the, you can't pull the tongue completely all, almost out. Like in these, you know, when you have the lace all the way down, you could really stretch that tongue out and put your foot in there with ease. In these, because they're laced all the way to the top, they're they're tough to put on, man. I, I tell you, especially if if you're sleeping in your tent or hammock or whatever, and it gets cold outside and the leather gets a little stiff, it makes it pretty difficult to put your your boots on. I do wish that they have some sort of a loop like these guys where you could just really yank on this and have some, some, something to pull on to put your foot in, in, in the boot with, with, uh, without any struggle. So that's my only complaint with these. Um, I'm kind of jumping around, so I apologize for that. But the other thing about these is that to my surprise, they don't sell these insulated this particular model, the Lynx. So, I'm, I, my feet get cold pretty easy, and I was, one thing that, another, one of the other things I was hesitant on pulling the trigger on these is that the fact that they don't come insulated, I was afraid I was gonna get out, I was gonna get cold, my feet were gonna get cold in them. And I don't know if it's just because of, of the quality of leather and material they're using, Obviously these have Gore-Tex in them just like these Danners, but for whatever reason My feet do not get cold in these and they're not insulated 
And that to me, that was a big surprise. I've wore these in snow too, uh, around Christmas time. It was really cold up in the mountains and wore them all day in the snow and didn't get wet and my feet were stayed super warm. That was a that was a big surprise to me compared to these they're 800s insulated 400s and then uninsulated and my feet yeah they really like these. So you guys this is kind of my quick quick spiel. You know, I didn't tell you a lot of the nitty-gritty details on them and exact all the specs or anything like that just look them up go to their website and you could find out a lot more information on them but hands down Zamberlin's uh, Lynx mid GTX BOA system boot is the bomb highly highly recommend these look them up go to a store try them on and, and if, you know, if the BOA system is a, is a deal breaker for you, like I said, they make this exact boot with your, just the regular shoelace system. And um, I'm, I, I don't know, I'll have to see maybe my next pair, maybe I'll try the, the shoelace one and, and kind of compare the two. But for now, I want to get as many years out of these as possible because they, they are expensive. So, you guys, Thanks for watching the videos. If this was at all informative to you and helpful, if it's not too much to ask, if you could subscribe to our channel and hit the like button, highly appreciate that. Thanks for watching, guys.